All right, so welcome to the final part of this tutorial. In this video, we're gonna be showing you how to create a recycler view and get all that API information from the previous video and insert it into the recycler view. Plus, we are going to show you how to handle those recycler view click events so you can actually open the link from each article and display it into a web view or a browser. And with that being said, let's just get started immediately by creating a new package where our main activity is located. So we'll go and type in new package and inside here we will type in adapters and inside here we want to create a new class so we'll do Kotlin class and we'll name it recycler adapter so the first thing we want to do in here is create a few parameters in our constructor and the first one's going to be a private var called titles and that's going to be a list of string and since they are all going to be lists we can just try to save some time by copy and pasting all of this. So we'll go one, two, three, and remove the last comma. The second one is gonna be called details. The third one should be called images. And the fourth one will be called links. Let's just tidy that up a bit. And then down here, right before the curly bracket start, we want to extend recyclerview.adapter. And inside here, we will write recycler adapter. And we have to write view holder at the end. So the first thing we should do is actually implement the members that it wants us to implement. So we will just enter those and it will give us all of these down here inside the block. And the first thing that we really should do is create an inner class. So we'll type here inner class and that's gonna be called view holder, which is going to take an item view of type view and we should import that. And it's going to return a recycler view dot view holder with an item view. And I just realized why there was an error. I forgot to add a C here. So it said recycler adapter, but it was missing that C there. And also I definitely forgot to add the construct invocation. It was just expecting that I added these parentheses there. But anyways, once we fixed all of that, we can continue inside our inner class and we are going to start by writing value item title. And that's gonna be of type text view, which is going to equal item view dot find view by ID. And it's gonna go r dot id dot tv underscore title and we really should import this art so let's tap on imports and now we're going to create a few more of these so it's going to be value item detail and that's also going to be a text view and we're going to equal that to item view dot find view by id and that's going to be r dot id dot tv underscore description then value item picture which is going to be an image view and it's going to be of item view dot find view by id r dot id dot IV underscore image. And inside this inner class, we are going to take care of the on click listeners for each item. So we're gonna start by typing an init block. And inside this init block, we're gonna type item view dot set on click listener. And then we're gonna write v dot view for this Lambda expression and add this nice arrow. And then inside here, we can handle our on click events. So we're gonna write val position is going to be of type int and it's going to equal adapter position then we're going to create an intent so it's going to be value intent equals intent and inside here we need to type in intent dot action view and right below we're going to write intent dot data it's going to equal a yuri dot pass and it's going to take the link at the position that we tap on it so we're going to do at the position of position and we have to import yuri and finally we have to make sure to start this activity so we're going to type in start activity even if the id does not want to help me out this is a valid function so we'll start activity item view dot context and then it's going to take the intent as an intent and the options are going to be set to null then we can just tap on start activity and click on import and this whole init block should take care of all the on click listeners now we can just tidy that up a bit and we can go below to the overridden functions so we will start with the on create view holder where we will create a value of v and it will take a layout inflator and then it will take it from the parent.context and it, we will inflate r.layout.itemLayout and we'll type in parent and we will not attach it to root so we will set that to false. And then we need to return a view holder with the value V inside it. So it will just inflate everything we need and it will create our view holder. And then for get item count, we are just going to write the simple return statement, which will say return titles dot size, just to make sure we never get an out of bound exception. And finally, for our onbind view holder, this is where we are actually going to attach the data to the recycler view items. So inside here, we will start by writing 
holder.itemTitle.text is going to equal titles at the position of position. And we're gonna write something similar for the second one, which is just going to be for the details. So we can actually just copy and paste that and write item detail. And we have to replace title with details as well. And finally down here, we can write glides.width and it's gonna take the holder.itemPicture, which is our image view. And we are going to load the images or the URL that we get at the position that we find it. So at position. And we need to load this into our holder dot item picture. And that was the final piece of the recycler adapter that we had to take care of. Now we can finally go to our main activity Kotlin file and finish up this app. So in our main activity, the first thing we want to do is create some variables. So the first one we're going to create is a late in adva of countdown timer. And that's gonna be of type countdown timer. Then we're gonna write private var titles list. And that's going to be a mutable list of type string. And we're just gonna copy and paste this four times and change the title each time. So one, two, three, four. Here we will write description list and right below we will write images list. And for the final one, we will type in links list. So now we have four variables of type list and they are all mutable lists. So that is good. And then down here, we're gonna create two functions. One's going to be to set up the recycler view. So we're gonna write private function set up recycler view. And that's gonna take our recycler view from our XML. And we are going to call layout manager and assign to it a linear layout manager, which is going to take application context as the context. And then we can write rv underscore recycler view dot adapter is going to equal a recycler adapter and that's going to take four arguments one is going to be a list of titles a list of description a list of images and the list of links so let's just type in titles list then we need to write description list then we have to write images list and finally links list and that's all we have to do for setting up our recycler view and right under we're going to create a private function that is named add to list and this will add items to our recycler view and it's going to take first a title of type string then a description of type string, then an image of type string. And you've guessed it, it will also take a link of type string. Then inside here we'll write titles list dot add and it will add the title. Then we are going to write description list dot add description, images list dot add image, and finally links list dot add link. And this will just simplify adding items to our recycler view. But next we can go back to our make API request function and add a few lines of code to our for loop. So inside here, instead of just having a log statement, we will also write add to list and it's going to take the article dot title as a title, then the article dot description as a description, then an article image as an image, and finally, an article.url as the URL. And this will all be added to our app as we launch the app. But anyway, once we added this function to our for loop, right below we have to add with context, and this is going to take dispatches.main, so we can update the UI. And inside here we will set up the recycler view. So we'll write set up recycler view. And with that, we should have the basic functionality done for this app, but we still have to implement what happens if there is no internet, but for now, let's just run the app and see what it looks like. So we'll tap on phone screen and we will click on play. All right, so I forgot to disable two things. One is the view. We actually need to set this to gone. So we'll type visibility equals gone because last time I just set the tools to gone, but I forgot to add the loading screen. That's why we just have a black screen so far. And we should also set the progress bar to invisible as well. So we'll do visibility equals gone. And then if we rerun the app, and once we've removed that black screen and the progress bar, you will see that the app loads perfectly, all the information gets placed inside. And if you click on any of these articles, it will take us to the website from where it came from. So this took us to bbc.co.uk. And there's one thing I forgot to mention. Some of these articles do not have URLs or proper URLs that allow you to have images. So this is perfectly normal that you have an article without an image. But uh, yeah, that is the basic functionality for creating this news app. Now we will go back and implement a few nice features that will make your app look a bit nicer, such as the fade in from black, 
And also a way to handle the error that in case there's no internet or something goes wrong, the app will continue trying to fetch the data from the API. So we are going to close the screen. So still in our activity main XML, we are going to remove this visibility that says gone. And we are going to remove this progress bar visibility that also says gone. So it will be just as before. And when you start the app, you'll see it will just be a black screen. But that's fine because in our main activity, we will handle that immediately. So the first thing we want to do to handle the black screen is create another private function, which is going to be private function fade in from black. And it's going to take our view of the black screen and we're going to type animate and we're going to also type apply so we can save some time. We are going to change the alpha to 0f and the duration will last three seconds. So we will type in 3000 milliseconds. And at the bottom, do not forget to call start or else it will not do any animation. And we are going to call this fade in function right here where it sets up the recycler view. So as soon as all the data has been loaded, it will fade in from black. And we also want to set the progress bar visibility to visible when we make the API request. So we'll write view dot visible and we will copy and paste this. And as soon as it loads, so as soon as it fades in from black, it will change this view to gone and it will disappear. And finally, we only have one more thing to do. And that is in case there is no internet, we would like this app to continuously try to fetch the data so that the user does not have to wait indefinitely. But we can handle that by first writing with context and calling this batches dot main and inserting a function which we will call attempt request again. And then we of course have to create this function. So we will go down and write private function attempt request again. And inside here, it's not going to be anything too difficult. We're just going to use a countdown timer to count down five seconds each time it tries to make the request and retry to make the request. So we'll first type in countdown timer and that's going to be an object of countdown timer. And that's going to take a few arguments, five times 1000. And then we want the countdown interval to be 1000. So it will count down five seconds at the rate of one second per second. And then we will enter a block. So it will give us this error on the object, which says we must implement these members and we will click on OK. Then as soon as this timer finishes, we want it to make our API request. And we also want it to cancel our countdown timer because sometimes it will reset it indefinitely. And that's not good. We just wanted to make one request. So we'll write countdown timer dot cancel. And for the on tick method, we can write a log. So we'll do log I and it's going to take main activity and we'll write could not retrieve data trying again in milliseconds until finished divided by a thousand and write seconds at the end. And finally, we need to type in countdown timer dot start. So as soon as we get an exception, we will have a log printed to us that says which kind of exception we have. And then with the context dispatches main, we will launch a new request. So every five seconds, it will launch this request, which will try to get all of this again and it will loop indefinitely until we successfully get the request. So yeah, that's actually all there is to creating this very, very simple news app. Now we will test it one more time by clicking on replay. And you can see how it loads nice and slow and it just looks a lot better than just brutally opening the app with no animation. So that is a very nice touch that you can add to your app. And I should also show you what happens if you don't have internet and there's an exception. So we'll click on airplane mode and we will relaunch the app. You will see that the app does not crash and it provides us a loading screen, which will load indefinitely. It's preferable that you add some text that says we are still trying to get the information or else they will think it froze. But if we change it from airplane mode back to normal, you will see that the app is continuously trying to retrieve that information. And once it does, it will load it into the recycler view and we will have a fully functioning news app. But anyways, this was the final video of the series. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys around.